Just a quick note about the music, because this is the first week of Advent, we always do a different Mass for the season of Advent. So this year we're doing the Belmont Mass, which starts on uh, number one, uh, 848, starts on 848 in your books. That's the Gloria. You might recognize it because we've sung it before. Um, and then the Holy Holy is 851. You just have to flip the page to get to that. When we eat this bread, 853. Amen is 855, and the Lamb of God is 856. So that's what we'll be singing during this Mass. It's a chant Mass, not super hard. Um, okay. Advent is a time to prepare for the coming of the Lord, whom we portray as a precious infant in a simple manger at the end of this season. But there are two more arrivals of our Lord to contemplate during this season of preparation and they tend to be overlooked. One day, Jesus Christ will come again in glory as the world ends, and he delivers his final judgment. He gives a glimpse of this to his disciples in today's gospel. But let us also consider his third appearance to each of us personally, into our hearts and our lives, as we embrace him as his disciples. As we celebrate today, let us consider how we can welcome him even more intimately into our lives. Please rise to greet our celebrant, Father Toth, and please join in singing our opening hymn, number 38, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We will sing verses 1 and 2 during the procession. Then the wreath will be lit. You can find that blessing on page 33. And after the blessing of the wreath, we will sing verse 3. Thank you. season, we are preparing ourselves for the coming of Jesus, the Christ who is the light of the world. The four candles remind us that the four weeks of Advent are both a preparation of ourselves for Christ's coming again in glory and a remembrance of his birth in Bethlehem. Lord God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, Jesus Christ, who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Bless this wreath. May this light reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever.
faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask you and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in disarray, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy from carousing and drunkenness, and that the anxieties of daily life and that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So the first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Where did we hear the Holy Spirit? We hear the Holy Spirit speaking through the, speaking through the prophet, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, the protagonist of history who renews the face of the earth, who makes Jesus present. That here is that same Holy Spirit speaking through the prophet Jeremiah with a promise, with a promise that the Messiah will come, the Messiah will come, he will be the point of contact. Because at the time of this writing, at the time of this prophecy, the northern and southern kingdoms are divided, and they would remain divided for a period roughly the same as the age of this republic, about 200 some odd years, the northern and the southern kingdoms would be divided, would be divided, and the prophets were not enough. There were Amos and Hosea, and they prophesied, but it wasn't enough. It would have to be person uh, who is priest, prophet, and king, the fulfillment of every prophet, the fulfillment of every priest, the fulfillment of every king, one in the being with the Father, our point of contact with ultimate reality and with each other, who can bring these peoples together. Only the Messiah can do that. Only the Messiah can do that. And only the Messiah can be the bridge between time and eternity, heaven and earth. And so, and so, right? These are the signs, the signs and the symbols. Recognize the patterns. Pattern recognition. Pattern recognition, brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. Second reading, what's going on? What was that all about? What was that all about? Well, St. Paul was writing a letter to the early Christian community in Thessalonica and saying, yeah, yeah, it's been brought to my attention that uh, you've been uh, catching a beating up there. Timothy, to Timothy, uh, Paul had to escape in the middle of the night. Then he uh, repaired to a city called Berea and then to Athens. And uh, so Paul and Barnabas, right, to Timothy, they remained in Thessalonica, and then reported, do you realize that everywhere we went and spoke in Thessalonica, officials from the synagogue have come and have really lowered the boom. They've been taking names, they've been kicking down doors, they've been harassing everybody, right? And then, this information was brought to Paul, who at this point, as I said, is in Athens. And then Paul does something that changes history. 
Paul does something significant in the history of Europe. What does he do? Please tell us, what does he do? He writes a letter. He writes the letter. This is the first chronologically document of the, Old, of the New Testament. He writes this letter. He writes this letter. <laughs> says, when the game gets rough, you have to go inward. You have to go inside when the game gets rough, and it's going to get rough. Right? When the punches come fast and furious. Right? Everybody said they'd stick around when the game got rough. Where are they now? Where are they now? I had, to, I, had, I had to load up my desk, you know, I had to empty my desk, and all the people I worked with so many years wouldn't even look me in the eye as I brought my things from my office and put them in the trunk of my car. Right? Right? Where? Where were they now? Right? The game's going to get rough. You want to bear up under this type of pressure, you have to be holy. You have to go into your heart of hearts. Any type of impurity. Now's the time. Right? We've got to strip down. You never know. The game's going to get rough. Right? You form your conscience, follow your conscience. You've got to clean the inside of the cup. I let the Almighty fill it up. You can't just clean the outside. You've got to clean the inside too. Right? If you want to bear up under the indignities that you have to endure, you want to follow Jesus? You want to follow Jesus? And he caught all these beatings. Right? Through that narrow gate, you have to make sure, right? It starts by making sure that all the impurities, all of the additives, all of the vanity, all of the gossip, take it away, right? Take it away. Something serious is going to come down on me. It's going to come down on all of us, right? But what do we do? We're supposed to run around the world and punch people? No. God, it's got to go inside. Get your house in order. Right? Make sure that the post and beans are all uh, are all strong enough to bear up under the storms, right? Yeah, you know, it's gonna be a lot of things that are gonna go down. You might not understand. You might not understand, right? But make sure, right? Your conscience is clear. I know my redeemer liveth. Remember Job, your whole world could collapse around you and say, I know my redeemer liveth. My conscience is clear. My conscience is clear. Right? So it is my bittersweet and sad duty to inform you, my brothers and sisters, that I will no longer be in residence at uh, Our Lady of Good Counsel. So as Richard Milhouse Nixon said, you won't have me to kick around anymore. <laughs> Some of you are old enough to remember that, right? The checker speech. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my dearly beloved pastor, Father Stinkway, is convalescing from a form of cancer that uh, suppressed his autoimmune system and as you know i work at the valley hospital and uh, and i and i i consulted with um i consulted with the uh, the uh, uh the doctors and nurses and they said you know it's true you know because when we go from outside to inside and then from inside to outside we always change our clothes right we have our street clothes then we go into the locker room, then we train, change into our scrubs, then we do our work, then we go back to the locker room, then we change into our street clothes. But if you're walking in and out of your, with your street clothes to, uh, to, all of these, uh, to all of these rooms and then going back and residing where, you know, you have uh, Father Cinque who is uh, convalescing, convalescing, uh, it's, it's hazardous. As it is, right? And also, I, um, I travel around the country uh, raising money for the suffering poor, and uh, mostly Haiti, a country that's dear to my heart. And I pass through airports. And the last time I passed through Miami International Airport, I think we pulled it, even though I was vaccinated, right? So, probably because I had to check an extra bag. Maybe that's when I got really close. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's where it's usually against my principles to ever check a bag. I'm one of these uh, old style travelers, you know. But uh, yeah, so uh, uh, be sad, you know. But you know, it's the type, you know, what the type of the type of 
vibe that Father Cinque has created here, the kind of the way this parish has that nice mellow vibe, you know, you can come in out of the cold, come in out of the dark, and then the kind of subdued colors, and it's just prayerful, and uh, it's a good place to be, you know, it's a good place to be. I'm so glad that I had an opportunity to walk this stretch of road and accompany you, as they say in the South, all of you all for a little while, right? And hopefully see y'all on the other side, right? See y'all on the other side. And then the gospel today, right? Signs, right? Signs. He, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, right? Every Sunday after the homily, you've been saying that. You ever add birth to that? Those words just coming through you? You ever take possession of those words? Right? You ever think about that? Right? You know? There will come a time my soul separates from my body. My soul appears before the judgment seat of the Lord. Is my conscience clear? Any kind of resentment I have against my neighbor, my parents, anything, anything, you got to go on a long march. Make sure there's no pebbles in your shoes. Is that right? Does that make sense, right? Any of that. Always, always be ready. Oh, do not let your hearts be drowsy, right? All right, so. Not enough tryptophan coursing through your veins, right? From the turkey, right? A vigorous walk on the hills will cure many ills. And, uh, but just do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with our Jesus, walk humbly with our Jesus, right? The time is short, the time is short. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten of me, consubstantial with the Father, doing all things that remain for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. During this season of expectation, we call to mind our needs and our hopes, anticipating that the God who promised to be with us always will be attentive to our prayers. Our response is, loving God, hear us. For the church, that we may be a sign of God's presence in the world, increasing and abounding in love for one another and for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us. For world leaders, that they may always strive to do what is right and just, so that all may dwell safe and secure. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us. That we may be generous in sharing the blessings we have received, so that our generosity may benefit the millions in the world who struggle to find the necessities of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us. For our Jewish brothers and sisters, as they begin the celebration of Hanukkah at sundown on Sunday evening, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us. For all those who are ill, may they feel the healing power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us. 
receive our beloved dead, Sister Leo Veronica Casada, SC, Barbara Christie, that they may sleep in the promised peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, hear us. Bless those who will share in the fruits of this Mass, the Ederline and the Young families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, hear us. I pray for my little nieces and all young people, young females, young females. Please, God, watch over them and protect them. I pray that they don't have to do bad things with bad boys. Please watch over and protect our beloved young people. Also, my nieces should remember that my brothers and my brother-in-laws are former military, all right? So <laughs> you're gonna, for the sake of those bad boys, you're, just leave them alone, all right? So, <laughs> I suggest you do that. Please, God, watch over our young people, please, the wellsprings of our future. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us. Merciful God, throughout the centuries we have offered comfort and hope to all who look to you. May we pass on that comfort and hope to others as you listen to these prayers we make today through your Son, our Lord, whose coming we proclaim in joyous expectation. Please join in singing our presentation hymn, number 41, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, number 41.
Today, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice on yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May you worship such a Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we, who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Señor mío, Dios mío, ten misericordia de nosotros y del mundo entero. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took a chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Señor mío, Dios mío, ten misericordia de nosotros y del mundo entero. The Mystery of Faith. that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope and our Bishop, 
and all the clergy, remember also Joseph, our bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us while we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. This mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. sangre de Cristo me guarde para la vida eterna. Amén. Por 
May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endure through Christ our Lord. Amen. So please be seated for a few brief announcements. We're looking for someone to assist in the religious education office for Sunday mornings from 9 to 11.30. If interested, please call the rectory. And Friday of this week is First Friday. Exposition and Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will be celebrated from 7 to 8 p.m. in the church. All are invited and encouraged to attend. Yeah, we're just little people. Who's going to know that we were ever even here besides our kinsfolk? The parish, the parish, you will be remembered, you will be cherished, you will be loved, right? This is, as I like to say, you know, uh, our point of contact, right? The Jesus is here, he's here in this parish, right? Good place to be, a good place to be together. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 388, City of God, number 388.